Last night we of course had Sony's E3 2017 conference. I wasn't able to stay up for it unfortunately, I was quite frankly absolutely exhausted so yeah that wasn't going to happen but regardless let's talk what happened. My name's Amata and in this Red Gaming Tech video we're going to look at the highlights of Sony's E3 2017 conference. So of course we still have Nintendo left to go but pretty much all of the heavy hitters have taken to the stage for E3 and of course we can start the conversation soon as to who we think had the best showing but before we get on to that Let's get cracking. Sony continued the theme of pretty much everyone else, apart from EA, obviously, of having minimal fluff and talking. Uh, they actually only had two sections from Sean Layden where he talked. The rest of it was just pure, here's a load of games. I have to admit, I like this trend. I really, really do. Because at the end of the day, that's what they were there for. We're not to hear the CEO say words like innovative and future and creative we're there to see what games we're we'll getting over the next year or two. So yeah, I'm cool. Uh, they didn't have an orchestra this time around, but they did start with some pretty cool music, which I did like. And they also kicked things off with Uncharted and Lost Legacy. Pretty much more of what you would expect. It looks like more Uncharted, obviously. And not really much gameplay on offer, unfortunately, but it still looked pretty damn cool. And it's undoubtedly going to be a big seller for the Sony guys and obviously even though it's not got Drake in it from what I can understand it's still going to be I think a nice sort of elongation of the series for Uncharted fans or of course probably a little bit sad to see their series probably say goodbye after too long. We also saw a showing from Horizon Zero Dawn which is quite nice an expansion coming this year which is really awesome. I recently finished that game I want to say three four weeks ago now and i lo absolutely loved it you know, really really good game probably going to be on my game of the year list so another sort of dollop of content from that game awesome sign me up it's called horizon zero dawn the frozen wilds obviously no gameplay just pure trailer but i'm still glad to see we're getting some more horizon content this year because well it deserves it it's a really great game we saw a return of the game we saw last year which is of course days gone and we saw a little bit more of what the gameplay is actually like outside of a very scripted section like we got last year. To be honest with you, it's the usual fare of sneaky, stabby, zombie stuff where you, you, know, you sneak around and you have to kill any hostile humans and you can't have any zombies to use them against your enemies, stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, this game looks polished. It looks like it's going to be a good time. It just looks like it doesn't have an original bone in its body. And... Sometimes that's okay, but uh, quite frankly, I'm bored of zombies, so I might be giving this one a miss. I don't know, I didn't see anything there that particularly spiked my interest, other than the uh, zombies and how they actually work. They're obviously a bit different to a usual video game zombie. Up next, however, Capcom had a really nice surprise for us with Monster Hunter World. Yes, a Monster Hunter game is coming to PC, as well as, of course, PS4 and Xbox One. Awesome. Just a nice chunk of gameplay. It looks, well, like Monster Hunter. I will admit, I've not actually played a Monster Hunter game, but I've heard a lot about them, and obviously Horizon Zero Dawn definitely took some cues from it, so I'm most likely going to check this one out. It looked pretty damn cool, and although the animations in the trailer were a little bit janky, it's clearly still being worked on. I'm just happy to see a Monster Hunter game come to not only PC, but obviously to PC and... Uh, sorry, PS4 and Xbox One as well, so that's going to be pretty sweet. I can't wait to get dug into that one. However, we had a we had a remake or a remaster or whatever you want to call it show its face in the form of Shadow of the Colossus. Now, this isn't until next year, unfortunately, but I have to say <laughs> I'm probably too excited for that because Shadow of the Colossus is one of my favourite PS2 games of all time. And while the controls are a bit jank, shall we say, it's still a brilliant game and it's still my favourite Team Ico game. To play this again, hopefully with reworked controls and obviously improved graphics and frame rate and so on, hell yes, sign me up. It looks gorgeous. I mean, it still looks gorgeous on the PS2 in all fairness, but it obviously looks very much improved. We saw a brief trailer for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite coming out in September, which is pretty cool. We saw a game by the name of Bravo Team for VR. There was a pretty big VR reel, actually, but oh, 
Before I forget, we saw a decent chunk of Call of Duty World War 2, multiplayer of course. It's coming out on November the 3rd. It looks like pretty much what you'd expect more Call of Duty, shooty, shooty, bang, bang, World War 2 action. We didn't really see much to show any real new ideas or anything fresh they brought to this particular entry. They're probably just going back to the basis with this one because, you know, they've obviously been going further and further into the future, adding more gadgets and gimmicks and so on. And to us, a peel back experience that is just, here's some Call of Duty. That's probably exactly what the fans want to be honest so onto the vr reel we had a ton of stuff we had skyrim psvr yes apparently skyrim is not going to be satisfied until it's sold on literally every platform in the universe we also saw again bravo team something by the name of moss which is a third person puzzle game i think and I, i'm gonna assume that that's not only a vr game otherwise i have to ask why? And I also have to ask why about a game by the name of Star Child, which is a side-scrolling game. Again, I fully expect this to be outside VR as well, because otherwise... <laughs> you know, I'm not saying like VR doesn't lend itself at all to these games, but obviously it works better if you're in first person, or something like that. We also saw a horror game called The Impatience. We saw a spooky, scary asylum, and that was about it, but I'm interested because it's horror. Uh, we also saw Final Fantasy XV Monster of the Deep, which is a fishing game in VR. <laughs> this was quite comical because it had this really like epic guitar music, and I was just like, oh, this is quite tongue-in-cheek, actually. I quite like this. <laughs> we saw more God of War. More Dad of War, as it's now going to be called, I think. It's looking good, I have to say. More gameplay than we had last time. Also, we had a decent chunk of gameplay, but I feel we had less cutscene this time around. And obviously, he's got the axe this time and not the Blades of Chaos. But the gameplay, in terms of its combat, still looks fast-paced. It still looks frenetic and it still looks gory as hell. So it looks to be keeping the spirit of God of War. And we saw some hints of the story. It was a, a brief glimpse of the world snake and a talking wolf who was obviously talking to Kratos about how he's far from home, that sort of thing. So we're definitely obviously connecting this to the past stories. This isn't like a weird pseudo reboot or anything like that. So that's good. God of War, definitely up on board for that. It's going to be early 2018. Not really surprised to not see it this year, unfortunately. We also saw some gameplay, well, gameplay, quote-unquote, from Detroit Become Human. It's it's David Cage. What else can I say? It's pretty much what you would expect. It's probably telling the most tired story in the history of man, which is about an android revolution. So, as well as the sort of police character that we saw last time, we've got these androids that are sort of freeing other androids and starting a sort of war for freedom, that sort of thing. And, you know, we saw the usual stuff of how your choices matter and affect the story and all this other stuff. And, I mean, you know, I hope they do. But, uh, you know, that actual impact that you have on the story is a bit, a bit mixed, obviously. He's gotten better with time, obviously. You know, Beyond Two Souls actually had a lot of sort of flexibility there. So, I'm interested. I always find David Cage's games interesting. But calling them games is, uh, you know... Bit of a stretch. <laughs> Outside of the most unoriginal meme ever, where the form of hating on David Cage, we're going to be moving on very briefly to Destiny 2. They just showed some gameplay. It's going to be exclusive PS4 content with a PV PvP map and some weapons and a bunch of stuff. You guys know how I feel about console exclusive content, especially when it's actually meaningful content. Like, it, if, if it was to say, for example, the weapons or a costume or whatever the fuck cool you know that is literally irrelevant and it's a nice little reward for thanks for buying the game with us kind of thing but you know a map come on really but you know it's destiny 2 it looked like destiny 2 not much else to say now sadly there was no showing from from software I'm not surprised. I fully expected the Bloodborne 2 rumours to be wrong. I mean, obviously, it is very possible they're still true, but we won't be seeing it until next year. I'm fully expecting From Software are taking a bit of well-deserved downtime. I think a bit of a breather for them and for us is good, because, you know, Heart, uh, 
This is make the heart grow fonder. I almost said heart and this make the heart grow fonder. That is, no, that's, that's not a thing. <laughs> so yeah, no showing from them. But we did finally see some gameplay for the Spider-Man game from Insomniac. Of course, last year it was purely all pre-rendered trailer. And obviously you can use your web sling for combat. You know, you can like, you know, fling enemies. Or use items to fling at enemies. You can pin enemies to the ground. Obviously you could swing into enemies with your webs. The combat looked really, really smooth. Kind of reminded me-ish of Batman Arkham. Not in terms of like it's using that style, but in terms of the very nice looking flow that the combat actually had it reminded me of the smoothness of the Arkham combats obviously really making use of Spider-Man's speed reaction times and of course the web slinging we also saw a bit of traversal around the city obviously that's pretty much a key component of any Spider-Man game is how fun is it to get around by web slinging from building to building and it looks good I mean obviously it's hard to say until you play it yourself but uh, it looks smooth it's Looked like it made sense. And unfortunately, we saw the return of QTEs. I know. I thought we'd seen the last of them, to be honest. It's been a while. I can't remember the last QTE I had, really. Outside of Mash X to open door or whatever. But this was full-on QTE, press button to not die action. So, <laughs> not amazing that QTEs are in the game. But QTEs aren't necessarily bad. as They're all sort of overused. That's always been my philosophy. They're just, they're just a tool. It depends on how you use them. Overall, however, Spider-Man looked pretty damn good. I'm interested. I'm not a huge Spider-Man fan, but I uh, have seen the films, apart from you know, well, the most recent one, because I have no interest in that weird reboot that's telling the same story for no reason. I will see the new one that's coming out soon, though. That, that looks good. Regardless, Spider-Man looked really cool. So what was missing in its absence then? Well, obviously no Final Fantasy VII, not really surprising there. Also no Kingdom Hearts III, I'm hardly shocked given that we had a new trailer like two days ago. There was also no Shenmue, but given that we recently had the reveal of it's going to be delayed until next year, no surprise there. No indie games again this year, they kept it short and sweet, which, you know, while it's a shame to not see indie games being given the limelight, I do appreciate them keeping their console short, because a lot of these conferences can just drag on for what feels like ten years and a few little extra tidbits, for example, Undertale is coming to the PS4, which is pretty damn awesome. And there's going to be a new mobile horror game called Hidden Agenda from the guys who made Until Dawn. Happy to see Undertale come into console. Obviously, I've already played it on PC, so I'm not going to be getting it myself. But it's a great game and it deserves more exposure. I'm sure console players are going to be happy to have the chance to play it on their home machine. Obviously, you can run this game on a potato uh, when it comes to PC, but, you know, obviously it's still better to just have it on your console if you can. So, overall, a pretty damn good conference from Sony. A lot of stuff we've already seen. There was not that much new, really. I mean, in terms of new stuff, we only really had Monster Hunter. Uh, we had, of course, the expansion for Horizon. We had the VR reel, which had a decent amount of new stuff. And obviously... Shadow of the Colossus as well. I don't know if that counts as new. If it's a remaster of an ancient game. I don't know. But yeah, Sony loves to announce stuff that isn't coming out for like two years. So I was fully expecting to see like some brand new trailers. But no, no, they kept it actually fairly grounded. And we have some stuff that is coming out this year. As well as, of course, a bunch of 2018. So, overall, I thought the Sony conference was pretty good. I liked the complete lack of talking. Almost complete lack, should I say. And overall, a pretty damn nice showing from Sony. I think it's going to be a tough call between them and Microsoft as to who's going to win it. As for Nintendo, I'm torn on how exactly I'm going to do that one because, well, they're Nintendo. And if I do what I've been doing for the rest of my E3 videos and use captured footage from the conference, I'm going to get claimed within about 0 0.5 seconds. So, I don't know. Maybe I can do that within an article. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that one. Nintendo's gonna Nintendo, so you know, I've got to think about that one a bit. But regardless, E3 is almost done. But thank you very much for sticking with me for all this content. I fully appreciate your support. Of course, do keep your eyes peeled for more. And of course, Paul and I are going to be doing a podcast to discuss the E3 conference this year and who won and all that jazz. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.